Hey everyone, it's Michael. Um, I'm still got this little bit of a cough type of thing going on, um, so just bear with me throughout this video. We have a big haul today for the books that I got in the mail this week. Um, I did kind of a weird thing. I, I, I'll show you in a little bit, but. For right now, uh, number one, sorry the video is coming up so late in the day. You know, our mailman sometimes he gets here at like one o'clock, sometimes he gets here at like three o'clock. Uh, so I decided to go get some dinner, and then I came back, and he had come. So that's cool. So I uploaded the video now. Um, but anyway, first book that is here is a classic book. It's a sequel to a classic book, but it is a classic '62 era book. It is uh, Goosebumps number 44. Say cheese and die again. Um, yeah. I'm curious about this. I've only seen the TV episodes of the first and second. Well, I think there's only two episodes in general, but I've only seen those. I've never read the books ever, even though I have two copies of the first book. So I'm kind of curious about what these will be like, if I'll like them or anything like that. I really liked that first episode, and I kind of, sort of, kind of enjoyed the second episode, too, uh, on the TV show adaptation of them. But the first episode was really cool. It had Ryan Gosling in it, of all people. I love Ryan Gosling. Great actor. If you haven't seen Drive, you need to see Drive. Um, anyway, yeah, there's that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, there's another classic book here. Uh, this is probably, out of all of the Goosebumps books I own, this is the, probably the most damaged. Now, usually what I do, I buy $5 books on Amazon when I'm looking for these, and they're usually what's listed as acceptable, and a lot of them typically come in good condition. Maybe a page or two is bent. Maybe a corner of a cover is kind of torn off a little bit, uh, or hanging or anything like that. With this book, though, it's like the whole cover is like taped to the book, and I'm not happy with that. Um, that's not acceptable. That's trash. You know, even though Amazon and Ebayers and stuff want to call this acceptable, it's not, in my opinion. Um, this is Goosebumps Classic Era number eight, The Girl Who Cried Monster, which I've also never read and I've never seen the TV episode either. I really hope this is good. Yeah, like I said, there's tape all over this thing, man. Uh, just covered in it. It's like thick, wide, wide tape, too. When I open up the book, the cover, like, wants to go all the way open. It's basically like the cover's not even attached, essentially. You can see the line there. Um, in person, you can kind of see through it. The cover's literally not even attached. So at some point, I might go ahead and buy a new one copy of these. I don't know. It depends on whether I like the book or not. If I don't like the book, I'll probably just throw it out. But then again, just for collection's sake, I might buy a new copy anyway. I don't know. It depends on what God allows, you know? Um, this book came out this week, and I'm really excited over it. I wonder if you guys happen to get your copy yet either. It's uh, Goosebumps Slappy World number 8, The Dummy Meets the Mummy. Yeah, I am a big Slappy fan, as you guys know, for people who are familiar with the channel, and I'm also a huge, huge fan of mummies, like the old Universal Monsters films. Um, I haven't read any Goosebumps books with a mummy in it, so I don't know... Well, I read Diary of a Mad Mummy, but that doesn't really count, technically. But... I'm curious if this is going to be like the one from the original classic era mummies, or is there only one? Or is it just two? I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't read those. <coughs> I saw the horrible <coughs> TV, <coughs> TV adaptation, and uh, it wasn't impressive. It was pretty horrible. Uh, probably one of the worst Goosebumps books episodes ever. Um, anyway, yeah, Dummy Meets the Mummy. What do you guys think about this so far? Don't post any spoilers, please. I'm not going to get around to Slappy World anytime soon. I'm hoping and praying to be able to get to them by the end of the year if God allows me to live that long. But I'm, I'm, I don't know. I probably won't be able to get to at least this book by the end of this year. Maybe I'll start Slappy World. I don't know. Maybe at some point. Uh, I'm not even... I'm, I'm mostly finished with reading the... Um, um, summertime books because I'm, we're closing towards the end of summer you know August is next month and everything we're already halfway through July uh, I only have like one or two books left for summertime as far as I know unless there's books that I don't know take place during the summertime I know a couple of people in the comment section have recommended books to me that take place during the summertime that I either have or I just haven't gotten to it yet or you know there's things like monster blood that I suspect takes place during summertime but I don't know off the top of my head um, I'm just kind of picking up random things now, kind of like I was anyway with the beginning of the channel before summertime came around or anything like that, uh, just to try to pick up stuff to talk about and to read and uh, maybe possibly be surprised and enjoy like I was with the recent book that I read, which I can't wait to upload that review after this video. Now, these next quite a few books, as a matter of fact, I never had any interest in wanting to read these, and I really honestly, when I heard what they were, I didn't want to collect these. I just thought it'd be dumb. I saw a killer deal. I saw somebody that wanted to post this for $100 for 16 out of 18 of these books. 
and I couldn't pass up the deal. But I didn't even take it for 100. I made an offer for 70. And praise God, this person took that deal for whatever reason. I don't think they knew what they had, but we're going to get there in a minute. You're going to be shocked at some of the stuff you're going to see here because half of these things I haven't even seen on YouTube. Um, I don't think most Goosebumps collectors even know that these exist. Um, essentially, the first book is R.L. Stein Goosebumps Presents TV Episode Number One, The Girl Who Cried Monster. It's weird that in the same week I got two copies of this, um, this one and the other one that I just showed you. Never seen the episode, like I said, but what these are, if you don't know, these are really slim compared to your typical Goosebumps books. Uh, what these are are like 60-page novelizations of the TV episodes when the show was so big back in the 90s. Sounds really weird. I wasn't really excited about the idea anyway because I was like, the TV episodes aren't always that great anyway. Um, there are some that are physically impossible to find. There are, and, and I got blessed with a couple of them that are pretty costly right now. Um, praise God again, I was able to get my hands on them. But this is one of the easier ones to find. They also have some color photos inside. They have a huge font on these books, way bigger than a typical Goosebumps book. Um, yeah, real short, like I said, about 60 pages per book. But yeah, I mean, I couldn't pass up the deal, and I was like, you know, I want to do stuff to impress you guys. Well, not to impress you, that's probably the wrong choice of word. But I mean, in the sense of like, this YouTube channel means a lot to me. I have a small community here, a couple of people who comment all the time, uh, pretty much every video, but just the, the amount of subscribers that are coming in more and more and joining this little group of people who want to talk about something that only meant something to a generation of 90s kids and is slowly kind of getting back to the modern day era of kids in 2019 and getting them interested in this old series that we all loved and cherished too. Uh, the 90s babies is what I mean. But yeah, I'm really surprised that I was able to get such a good deal on these. I'm surprised the person went down to 70. I tried 60 and he didn't take it. So I was like, okay. So I went to 70 and I got it. <coughs> uh, book number two is The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Again, I have not seen this episode as far as I know. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. I own the physical book. I got it and I showed it in one of my hauls, one of my first hauls, if not my very first haul book, um, a while back. And yeah, so there's that. Again, it's very thin color photos inside. Um, I'll show you a picture of, well, a couple of pictures. Yeah, color photos, you know, pretty neat. Pretty neat books. Huge font, like I said. The third book is a typical classic for most American readers, most people who read Goosebumps in general. It's one that I'm not super fond of. Uh, I have my problems and my complaints with that I also talked about in my video where I reviewed the original book from the classic era of Goosebumps. That is Goosebumps Presents number three, TV, or TV episode three, uh, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. This is a really good in condition book that you know, I'm really surprised by how well put together this is and how much it's survived over time. Um, again, color photos, everything else. That it's, they all have color photos, just so you know, so I don't have to keep saying that. Uh, the fourth book is Return of the Mummy, which is what we just talked about a few minutes ago that I was slandering. Um, maybe the TV book will be better. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to add anything into these novelizations that are not in the TV episode. It's so weird to me having a novelization of a TV episode, which is an adaptation of an old book. It's real weird. Um, it'd be like having novelizations of episodes of like Family Ties or like Three's Company or something like that. It's just a really weird way to look at that. Um, I don't know. Anyway, book number five, which I did not realize that this even existed until a little while back, so where I've been doing my slappy book reviews, I missed this one. Night of the Living Dummy 2, book five, like I said. Uh, again, novelization of the TV episode. I don't know how good or bad this might be. It could be great. I don't know. I don't know anything about these. I haven't read a single one yet, so maybe at some point. We'll see. Um, the way I'm kind of planning on reading and reviewing these, again, if God allows, is that... <coughs> If I haven't already read the original book, then I'm not going to read and review the book, TV book things yet. Because um, at some point in the future, I want to talk about the video formattings of Goosebumps, like the TV episodes individually, review them here on the channel. I want to talk about the movies and stuff like that. Maybe even some of the video games, if I can get some of those beat, because they are hard. If you've ever played Goosebumps the game on 3DS, you know. It ain't easy, bud. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's move along, though. Now, at book number six, they changed the entire formatting cover of uh, these TV books. This one is My Hairiest Adventure, which I've always heard is one of the worst Goosebumps episodes. It's actually made fun of by JonTron here on YouTube, and it's hilarious, by the way. Um, this one, 
I'm not excited to read. I'm not even really excited to read the old book. I don't even own the old book yet. Uh, I'm going to buy it for collector's sake and reviewing sake, but that's about it. Yeah, I don't know how good this could possibly end up being. Uh, the next book is called The Headless Ghost, number seven. Uh, really weird cover here, you know, with the little face and whatever that thing is. Oh, it's like a... Oh. That's the headless ghost carrying its own head. I didn't realize that's what that was. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. I've been looking at that for like a week now, waiting to get around to making this update video, and now I realize what that is. I don't have a whole lot of common sense. Like, I don't think I'm a dumb human being, but I think I have a little bit of intelligence, but I'm just not a very common sense kind of guy. Uh, anyway, book number eight, Be Careful What You Wish For. I've never read the book, never seen the TV episode, don't know anything about it. I don't know. I know that Tim Jacobus didn't do the original artwork, because whatever reason. Um, I don't know. Might be cool. Book number nine, Go Eat Worms. I have not read the book. I do have a copy of the book my fiancé got me, I think, for Christmas or my birthday of last year or something like that. But uh, it was like one of the reissues where it's got like a yellow cover, but I also suspect that that particular copy that I got was a bootleg. I don't know for sure. Not because of her or anything, but just because of how, how Amazon is and how weird Amazon can be. Amazon doesn't allow you to post pictures when you're selling an item. So somebody could easily scam you out of something, you wouldn't even know it, you know? Anyway, yeah, Go Eat Worms. That could be cool. I've heard good things. I've heard good things. Uh, number 10, Bad Hair Day. I didn't even remember them making an episode out of this. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Never read the book, as far as I know. I might have cracked it open once and gave up. I don't know. It was years ago. I have a reissue copy from back in the uh, 2004 to 6 era. Um, that's what I have to this day. I've, I've had it since I was a child, so I don't know if it's any good or not. I uh, don't know if the TV episode is any good. I haven't seen it. Book number 11, Let's Get Invisible. I've read this book. I'm pretty sure. Not this particular book, but the book, Let's Get Invisible. I haven't reviewed it here on the channel. I haven't read it in like 10 years, probably. But, uh, yeah, I remember liking it from what I remember. I don't know for sure, but I remember liking it. So this could end up being good. Again, I don't think I've seen the TV episode. I'm almost sure I haven't seen this episode. The next book, one of my favorite original books that I was really surprised that people don't like it. The TV episode is okay. I don't understand the hate for it. I understand how campy and silly it is uh, to most people, but I enjoy both the TV episode and the book. That's just my own place on this. Number 13, Ghost Beach. Yeah, I like Ghost Beach. I don't care what you have to say about it. I don't care about your opinion of me. I like Ghost Beach. Anyway, uh, the next one, which is very popular, you have number 15, Monster Blood. Now, the thing is, with the Slappy book, Night of the Living Dummy 2, and with Monster Blood, Amazon decided to prank me, and I ended up accidentally buying another copy of this book and Night of the Living Dummy 2, tried to refund it, and cancel the item order and everything, and literally Thrift Books, the company that I bought it from, and usually I buy all my books from Thrift Books. Uh, I love Thrift Books. They're a great company. Uh, always loyal. They always get my stuff out really fast and very, very secure. You know, it's always very packaged correctly, I would say, where it'd be safe. The thing is, they kept sending me this really dumb generic message telling me that they could not cancel these, that I had to do that on myself. So now I have two copies of that coming. I don't know what to do with them. I might give them to a cousin or something. I don't know. who. If I have any kids in my family who enjoy Goosebumps, I don't know what to tell you. <coughs> the next book I'm really excited to read at some point. Um, I've never seen the TV episode. I have a copy of the book currently that I got not too long ago. And I've always wanted to know if it's any good or not. I want to read the book before I ever see the TV episode, but it looks like something I'll like. Uh, it looks very campy and very goofy. Uh, you Can't Scare Me is book number 14. Yeah, curious about this. Very curious. I like these mud monster things. They're really cool looking. Look at that picture, if I can show it to you. Yeah, it's kind of kind of eerie, you know? I don't know. Looks like the kind of cool stuff we had in the 90s, like on Are, Are You Afraid of the Dark and all that. Um, just so you know, <coughs> let's see. Where is the book that's missing? Okay, I think it was... Uh... Hold on. I'm losing track of stuff. Okay, book number 12 is Attack of the Mutant. I haven't gotten that yet, so hopefully it'll come soon. Um, I guess I got these a little confused, actually. I think you're supposed to do You Can't Scare Me Before Monster Blood. I don't know why these got confused. Um, it confused me, though. Book number 16 is supposed to be Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, and it's literally impossible to find. It just, you're not going to find it. It's impossible. The only listing for any book anywhere on the internet that I can find of is on uh, Amazon, and it's $900. So apparently there is another huge, extremely expensive Goosebumps book 
that I did not know about. And now I'm excited that I'm collecting these and I have all these now pretty much. I also bought Attack of the Mutant. It was cheaper um, on eBay, so it's coming hopefully at some point, God willing. But um, yeah, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, it's so popular as a TV episode and as a book. I've never read the book, but I've seen the TV episode like every Halloween for like the five or six years since I got the DVD. Um, <coughs> but yeah, the, the TV book, it's impossible to find. If you guys happen to have a copy that you wouldn't mind me buying off of you for like 40 or $50, please let me know and I will totally pull through with that. Um, I don't know how we would go through with that transaction. I, I don't even know how you could check up on that to make sure I have the money or to make sure you have the book on my end. I don't know. But if anybody has a copy of that, the original TV book, number 16, I'd love to buy that off of you. I really would for my collection, just for the sake of having it, to review it and talk about it on the channel at some point, maybe during Halloween of next year. I don't know. Or not Halloween of next year, Halloween of this year. That's right. I keep forgetting we're in summertime, not October yet. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a while, guys. But then again, I have a feeling if I was able, by God's wonderful grace, who I'm sure does not care about my Goosebumps collection at all, if I was able, by God's grace, to find a copy of Tim Jacobus' My Life as an Artist, the sun went away. It's just like dark in here now, I'm sorry. If I was able and blessed enough to be able to find that and Trick or Trapped for less than $200, uh, I got, I think it was, I think I paid like $40 for the, the, the Tim Jacobus book. And I think I paid like 15 for the Trick or Trapped book, which I was really excited about, thank God. Um, can't wait to talk about those at some point, If I again, if I get to live long enough to do something like that, to read them and talk about them. <coughs> I'm pretty confident, though, that if I was allowed to, to have those two be found and be able to buy them and get them in the mail safely, I'm hoping and praying I'll be able to get the Jack-O-Lanterns book, too, just to have it as part of the collection. It matters to me because this is like my own personal museum. You know, as weird as that sounds, it is like that. That's how I look at this, you know. But, oh well. Anyway, uh, book number 17, Calling All Creeps. This is one that is literally not listed anywhere. You cannot get this. Um, again, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, this is as rare as that. I don't even know what the price listing of this would be. It's not listed anywhere on Amazon anymore. They have the, the listing of it, but they don't have any to buy, like not a $900 copy or anything like that. It doesn't exist. It's impossible to find this, apparently. I saw somebody put all, all this up on eBay, and I grabbed all of it. Um, this, I don't know how much this is worth. However, the next book and the final book in the series, book number 18, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes, that also has a messed up cover that somebody decided to take like an index card and color it and put it right there to make it look more complete for whatever reason. This is next to impossible to find, too, apparently. I didn't realize how hard this would be to find. Um... I started looking at the prices on Amazon. I was originally going to buy all these books individually, just for the collection. And I happened to look, and this is like $250, $270, something like that listed on Amazon. And I was like, there's no way. But I found the one person, like I said, on eBay that I bought all these from, and I'm so thankful. I can't believe that I got such a good deal on all of these. Um, again, I don't think that he realized how much this book and Calling All Creeps are apparently worth or how sought after they are. I'm surprised they were listed on there as long as they were that nobody else snuck in and bought this. Um, but yeah, that was a really cool, really awesome part of my haul that I'm really excited about. Uh, I have two more books here for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this one came yesterday. It's Give Yourself Goosebumps um, Last Chance Special Edition Number 8 Weekend at Poison Lake. Um, very cool looking cover. Very weird. I don't like frogs and fish and all that, so this kind of bothers me in a weird way. Um, yeah, special editions. These are really hard to come by. This one's one of the easier ones to find. Um, I was blessed to get a good copy. Thrift Books has the little cover thing that says on the side. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love Give Yourself Goosebumps, if you can't tell already from the stuff that I posted here on my channel, if you happen to be not new to my channel. Um, I love Give Yourself Goosebumps. These special edition books have been really hard to get your hands on. Um, some can be worth outrageous amounts, like hundreds of dollars. Um, again, I've been blessed there, too, where God has allowed me to find some really cool stuff to bring into the collection, talk about here on the channel at some point. Uh, the next one is the first, and I believe, I believe I had one more special edition coming in the mail. Um, I think I currently have all of the Give Yourself Goosebumps special editions, as far as I know, unless there's some that just haven't gotten here yet that I don't realize yet. 
Um, but as far as I know, this is the next to last one that I needed for my collection. Um, this is Goosebumps, or Give Yourself Goosebumps, the Ultimate Challenge Special Edition number one, uh, Into the Jaws of Doom. Yeah, this is the first special edition that ever came out for Give Yourself Goosebumps. Maybe even the first special edition to ever come out for Goosebumps, ever. I don't know. Um, I don't know anything about this book. Maybe it's in a museum, like a Night of the Museum type of thing. I don't know. Uh, but it could be cool. It's got a T-Rex on the cover. Um, well, a dead T-Rex, like a skeleton. I don't know. It could be cool. But guys, that's pretty much the entire haul this week. Um, yeah, what did you guys think about all these books? What did you think about the TV books? Again, if you happen to know anybody who's selling the, the Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns book, I'd be willing to pay like up to $50 for it. Uh, that's it. That's all I'm willing to pay for it, because it's... It's something that I cannot see myself spending more than that on. So hopefully something will come up on the internet or on eBay or Amazon or something at some point uh, to be able to, com to complete that collection. It would be nice. I'm not really a completionist per se, but Goosebumps is my thing. Like, I, I want to collect all these like how other people collect comic books desperately. Um, there are people out there who collect every Venom issue that ever existed. There are people out there who collect every Spider-Man issue that ever existed. And they, God help them. Um, that's that's going to be quite a road to, to travel on. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I had a great time with this video. I hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys saw some cool stuff. Hopefully, uh, again, God willing, maybe I'll be able to read all of these books at some point in my life and put reviews here on my channel for them to talk about them with you guys. Anyway, thank you so much. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today. And uh, yeah, I've got a review, maybe possibly two reviews coming up today at some point. I don't know for sure, but at least one, confidently so. Um, but anyway... Thank you guys. God bless you today. Thank you for watching all the time, and goodbye.